And it's another uh, get the scalpel out and try and dissect exactly what happened in a defeat for the Republic of Ireland last night against Ukraine at home. It's not good, folks. Give us your views. 087-9180-180 is the WhatsApp number. You can leave a comment on the YouTube stream. Or, of course, you can uh, use the hashtag OTBAM on any of our platforms. Uh, Shane Hannan is with us. He was at the game last night. Shane, good morning to you. Morning, gents. How are things? Also with us, Colin Buig. Colin, how are you? Jordan Shane. Hello. Um, I mean, it looked like a nice occasion. It's just unfortunate that there were points on offer in a league where uh, winning points actually does have prizes, Shane. But um, <laughs> let's talk about the good stuff first. The, the nice thing that Ireland, that the FAI did for... Uh, the people of Ukraine who are in Ireland at the moment, there was lots of tickets for Ukrainian who, uh, children in particular who are fleeing the war. Um, and maybe it seems a bit churlish to be talking about football under the circumstances, but that's our job. So uh, what was the atmosphere like first before we get to the bad? Yeah, uh, like lovely atmosphere walking to the stadium, it has to be said, lads. Uh, beautiful sun. We were in the, the kind of the, that corner of the East Stand where the, the Havelock Square end is there, where, where all the away fans were. Um and yeah, there was a definite vibe that there was a lot of Ukrainian kids there enjoying themselves. Maybe hadn't seen a, seen a game of football in quite some time, especially in person. Um, really, really nice vibe. Um, and the Ukrainian people were clearly there. A bit of a carnival atmosphere, trying to come together as a country, trying to enjoy something, uh, which they haven't, of course, been able to do uh, in recent times. But um, yeah, it just just a, just a nice build-up to the game and, and the kind of the couple of... Um, boisterous Ukrainian men trying to constantly start a Mexican wave for the duration of the of the first half anyway to uh, to some luck but um, yeah lovely atmosphere really nice gesture as well by the FAI to, to give those tickets out free as well to the Ukrainian fans um, certainly contributed to the atmosphere it was funny I, w- I was sitting with my brother and my sister at the match and, and my sister hadn't been to a, to a game at the Aviva Stadium at all she, she remembers as a kid going to a couple of the, the games in the old Lansdowne Road and uh, like 20 minutes into the match when, when the Irish fans first stood up and, and the whole stand-up for the boys in green chant started for the first time, she was like, why, why haven't Irish fans been chanting until this point? She was kind of taken aback that the atmosphere didn't really kick in until 20, 25 minutes in when, when the Ukrainians kind of came back into the game. So strange atmosphere from an Irish home fan's perspective, but lovely to see the, the, the smiles on the faces of the Ukrainian fans over in that Havelock Square end. All right. Everything else was pretty terrible, right? Like, is there is there any redeeming feature here? All the stuff that we thought was good. It's so Jason Knight. Jason Knight was good. Player of the match. Nathan we, Collins is good. We'll get to he him. Great box. Well, I liked. I liked. Richard Donesk. I liked Nathan Collins' uh, ability to randomly appear in front of the midfielders. I thought this is good. Yeah. This is going to help with the press. But all of the stuff that we've been talking ourselves into was just not true. Ogbeni not very good last night. Kyle Robinson very streaky as we know, yeah. and he's currently in a bad streak, and so totally unreliable. Josh Cullen, grand. Yeah. Jeff Hendrick, that's Jeff Hendrick. That's his level. These, these games here, not playing football. Like, we're, we're talking Duffy up as our best attacking threat. Like, head the ball out of the penalty area when the free kick comes in. Mm. Quivine, tell them what to do. You know, like, you're, you're a man. You've become a man. We heard this. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Bazuna makes the save. Maybe Bazuna's not letting them come back the way they are. Like, but... I don't know. Team selection, not great. Like, uh, definitely David Connolly was on with us this week saying, you've got to start up with Femi. He's scoring loads of goals. What's the point in bringing him on as a sub? He's, he's not really used to it. And then, you know, maybe his introduction is partially to do with uh, an uptick in performance. But also, it's like Ukraine's second team who are defending a goal, a lead away from home for the last 10 minutes. There's going to be a bit where they sit back and defend. So, like, what did we do to influence the outcome of the game? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to be as positive as possible. Do you know what takes me back to the dark old days of the Steve Staunton Raider, the end of the Gia Tra- Giovanni Trapattoni era, where you'd have someone like Eamon Dunphy on saying, oh, this is all just useless. Why can't we modernise football? And then he'd randomly suggest Stephen Quinn should be in the team. And it was like, why can't we, why can't we just start playing football? So then Stephen Kenny comes in, and at least he's trying that. And we're trying to modernise and catch up with the rest of the world. But the problem is we're just an inferior version of modern football now. So we're kind of stuck in no man's land. We had this identity before where we were, you know, a long ball team. Backs against the wall job would get great results. And we've kind of sacrificed that uh, for progressive football. But the problem is we're kind of stuck in no man's land now where we're passing for the sake of passing, not very progressive. It's actually not that enjoyable to watch at the moment. But at the same time, before the Armenia kickoff as recently as last weekend, 
we were there excited. was quite well, we a were, lot of because, confidence. So that's how well, quickly because it's I changed. Think, I think we probably had talked ourselves into a few things that are not true. Callum Robinson is international quality. He probably isn't. Like he, he He's not playing regularly in the championship. Yeah, but you said he was streaky, which is true. So he goes through runs a decent form but I mean if you're saying like he's not good enough like who is like, this is a collection so that, of a lot of championship that's players that's the whole point that's the, like, this is our level actually it's not our level uh, our level is division 3 what's in, the expected level I mean what do you what do you expect from this generation of Ireland players are we way behind where we should be I'm not sure I'm not sure we are uh, are we really that far behind where we actually should be the absolute maximum that we can get to we That's have to be qualified thing. for major tournaments. Like, if we've done it before, we can do it again, surely. I mean, that was the kind of... The, the general atmosphere leaving the pitch last night was... Or leaving the stadium was... Like, I heard a couple of people talking about the fact that, well, Ukraine are Ukraine are a really solid team. They're really good. But the fact is, like, Ukraine made 10 changes from the Wales game. Their keeper was making his competitive debut. He had... Yeah. Their back three, I think, had three senior caps between them. Like, this was not... Uh, we all know of a full-strength Ukrainian team whatsoever, which puts it in, into context... And like you mentioned Shane Duffy there, the fact that he's the still the main scoring threat, and even from, like, we tried a, an acrobatic kick towards the end, like, it's not just launched balls in from the head, but even listening to Stephen Kenny after the match, and he's talking about, he felt like the team maybe weren't, you know, played too many long balls, that the passes in the final third weren't good enough. Change something then. Tell the players to stop launching the ball long. Like, I don't know, is it is it Anthony Barry's exit that's created this, uh, tactical confusion or what but it's, th- there has to be a reason for it in some sense lads it, I mean uh, the lack of performances since Anthony Barry's gone is either hugely Alarming. coincidental or important you know yeah uh, it's um, if if they are connected that's not great now you know the fact that Belgium were winning 6-1 last night against Poland while uh, this was all happening is like mm, okay <laughs> right it's, it's kind of annoying no, it's worrying. I still go into these games like Armenia and Ukraine thinking, oh, Ireland will get a result here. And they should be. I mean, like, like the majority of that Ukraine team last night played domestically and they played so, such little football this year for obvious reasons. So really, even this collection of Ireland players should have, should have done so much better. Look, I mean, like, we're, 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 a reading, asking, we're a reading in the year's country. We just want that World Cup moment. You're asking That's all we want. What, what are our expectations, right? How good was the squad in Euro 2016 that got to Euro 2016, that got out of the group in Euro 2016? Not significantly better than this. But a, better. A, a bit better, but not yeah. significantly better. You wouldn't say it's like, I'm sorry, maybe maybe it's miles better. And maybe, maybe yeah. like the yeah, number of minutes really played. Premier League player. But he wasn't a phenomenal know. Premier League player. I, no, phenomenal for Ireland. Uh, Hama. Top level player. Well, that's the problem at the moment. Uh, you can't uh, say either he, of those. So he wasn't phenomenal for Ireland either. He, he had a great tournament, but yeah, in, but the, in the qualifiers, about. like the midfield was Hendrick and McCarthy and Brady. James McLean started against France. Yeah. Daryl Murphy started against France. Yeah. And Shane Long, who, like, again, as streaky international players go, now they were probably playing a bit more football in the Premier League, but the back four was Coleman, Duffy. Kyo and Stephen Ward and Darren Randolph in goals. Mm. Like we're not we're not that far away from. Them. Yeah, Randolph had a great tournament, great match actually. That France game, so we scored early third minute penalty. But even in that tournament, it was you know the B to second string Italy in the last group game. Yeah, but then when Wes came on uh, and crossed it in and Mrs. Hitter before that, so it's fine margins. It is so fine margins. To the Saturday before kick off against Armenia, where people thought we're in a good place under Stephen Kenny. Well, That's it felt like it, it felt like we were in a good place, yeah. but um, was it a was it a grand national delusion about the quality of yeah, the players? Yeah, I think so. If you look at like statistically, if you just look at it, I mean, we haven't won a competitive home game in three years, and that was a scratchy win against Gibraltar. Uh, <laughs> two wins in seventeen competitive matches under Stephen Kenny. You failed to score in half the games, and uh, we we actually had as many shots overall and on target as Ukraine. So statistically, if you look, if you didn't see the game, you thought, oh, it was quite close. You know, they just nicked it. The scoreline suggests an accurate reflection on the game. Whereas if you watched it. It was Ukraine far more comfortable and progressive in possession than Ireland, who ran out of ideas very quickly. And look, one thing you could say, it's June in the Nations League and the players are wet. And a lot of the Ireland players aren't playing regularly enough to have any sort of uh, cohesion. But at the same time, there's a, a certain level that you expect at international football. This is the best that Ireland can offer at the moment. And when you watch it last night... There's no wonder that so people are furious overnight and this morning again, probably more so the morning after. Where's the hope coming from? There's no hope. Abandon hope. Is that no, it? No, no, no. Is that it? No. I, I spent most of this time trying to be positive. Well, and I can imagine people are furious, but why would you even nearly be positive about this team? 
Just well, nothing to be positive about. Well, sorry, Stephen I mean... He needs to go like, and all that. Look, uh, we, we are in a scenario where any players who are injured or who are out of form completely ruin the dynamic of the team because it's such a fragile ecosystem. So therefore, not having Andrew Omabamadeli, not having Adam Ida, uh, means that we don't have really a plan B. We've no target man and we've no ball playing centre back. Now, look, I don't know. I don't know. I, like... Is that enough for us to be completely... Or, sorry, the key absentee, obviously, in all of this is Matt Doherty, who is the one player who actually yeah. makes the right and wing back thing work. Yeah. And Coleman is missing too. I mean, the only thing with Kenny is he's sticking to his guns in terms of his system. I mean, he made two changes last night and one of them was enforced, a right wing back. Uh, but I don't know, like, Shane, what, did you, what was the sense you got in the stadium? What was the feeling among the fans around you? <laughs> Other frustration? Like yeah, well, it is frustration, but like you, you, you described the Irish people there as you know a nation that that kind of a reeling in the years nation, and that's true. And we're also a nation that loves a scapegoat, uh, maybe rightly so. But like, and I know the comments on 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 the stream this morning are from people listening and watching are going to be largely the Kenny out brigade, yeah. which uh, and often we're accused of being uh, Kenny FM and and the Kenny in brigade. But it does some and and look, this is this is largely me playing devil's advocate here to an extent, but. Like we can't control games. The decision making in the final third is is abysmal. It's toothless at times. Like, at what point does does any blame whatsoever come onto this these players? I mean, Dan McDonald making the, the point on Twitter last night that after ten days together, this team are still devoid of ideas, which which is worrying when you put it like that. This this team have have been working together in camp for the last ten days, and still they look like a team that's just been thrown together at the last minute. Like, of course, you have to give the management team some bla- level of the blame for that. But at what point can you, you know, you throw on Alan Brown and his first touch is off on a couple of occasions. Yeah, he was like, At what point does, do the players have to take Where did some he play? Sort of, he was poor. Where was he playing? I, I thought he was playing on the right of a three and very right. Well, like uh, old school Beckham style. Because when he came on, That's the, what I the saw him. co-commentator on the telly was like, oh, he's gone right wing back. I'm like, what? No, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. Surely somebody else. Like, it, I, so I don't know. I... I I don't know where he played for the rest of the game, but that's not his position, and that doesn't make any no, sense. But I think chasing that's... the game, like one quick question, right? Uh, Rotherham, who see Chidozi Ogbeni week in, week out, yeah, plays him there, play him in the right wing back, yeah. and we're like, we're like, well, they can't do that. Look what he's done for Ireland. It's like, well, they see him all the time, and yeah. maybe that was his position. Maybe, maybe this is a time where he, you try this out. So we don't think Coleman is going to probably through age and injuries for the rest of the next campaign always be available at right wing back Matt Doherty's had his injury problems it might get suspended too what's our third option there mm. try him in this I just but he was determined to stay with the system so if Duffy had scored at the end and it wasn't tipped onto the crossbar is the narrative slightly different this morning there's another one all over Ireland well it's, it's like, yeah, at least we got something out of the game yeah but it, it, yeah, but, it's but that's just papers over the cracks surely like Shane Duffy getting another late, late equaliser is just papering, papering over these, these cracks we can't rely on a Duffy equaliser in the 92nd no, minute know. off his and that's where we are with this but it, and it, as you look in a few months' time, and Stephen Kenny's still in this job, you see, you look back and it's a 1 0 defeat at home to Ukraine, so it's just another negative result. Whereas if it was 1 0, you'd be like, well, there's something there. And that was the problem yeah. last night, and it still would have been paid for in the cracks. Thing is, as well, in this country, like we're, we're an age of massive football lovers, love our good football, talk about the Premier League all the time. And the problem is, it's not in any way replicated in this set of players. And people don't expect them to be world beaters. But what you do like is a bit of innovation. And Jason Knight stood out last night, the start of the game, when he turned his man, played a lovely true ball, Callum Robinson was offside. And it's a little moments like that that you stick your hat on, like Michael Obafemi, right towards the end of the game, skinned his man. And I was thinking, geez, you see this so rarely from Ireland players. Do you know, that bit of innovation and that bit of bravery in possession. And it's little nuggets like that that you're trying to cling on. But then overall, you just look at a team who pass it sideways and pass it backwards are quite decent at retaining possession but you just don't believe in them. That's the, that's the worry. You don't believe in them. And Kenny is so determined to stay to the system that well, we are kind of stuck in no man's land. That's the problem now. I, I, you know, we are chiseling off decades of, uh, two decades of being told we're no good. Do you know? Yeah. And so, like... And Kenny's going the other way. You know, post-match does that, yesterday. Does that, system not need, does that system not need changing, lads? Like, you looked at Ukraine last night you know, turning turning to that five three two out of possession. We were swarmed out of it in midfield. 
And we knew pre-game, like the, the, the build-up, David Connolly last week even saying it, we knew we were going to be swarmed out of it in midfield in advance of kickoff but because did, of he, our he, system. He, he, sorry, he did pick Knight to help with that and you could see Nathan Collins pushing forward to try and add extra bodies there. So yeah. that they had clearly decided that they were going to be four central when we needed to. And like, if you think we should change the system, I'd be interested to hear to what. Well, this is this is the thing. Like, it, it is Stephen Kenny's job in order to to get results. And lads, this is a results based business to change the system. And if 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 it needs to be done mid game, like this is my worry that maybe the mid game decision making by by the management team leaves a little to be desired. Because as you said, Alan Brown coming on, we didn't really know where he was playing. The outlets just weren't there. Abafemi, yes, added a bit of liveliness when he came off the bench, of course. Um, but they just, I don't think. I don't think the conversation... Like, you, you listen to Stephen Kenny's post-match um, interviews and he's talking about the passing being sloppy. He says we didn't pass the ball forward enough. Is enough being said to these players and communicated to these players mid uh, like mid-game? You even mentioned Cuevin Kelleher there. He is a man now. He needs to step up. He needs to be able to speak and communicate. It's the most important position on the pitch in terms of communication. You probably see a little bit more of it when Gavin Bazunu is in goals, but it starts from the back. And the leadership and communication... I didn't see much communication between those Irish players last night. You go to a Sunday league match with a well-organised team on a weekend and you will see plenty of communication from the back and you don't see much of it from this Irish team and I don't know why. Um, we're better than Sunday league, right? I think that we, we should we should definitely temper that. But I do I do think, though, that if you're calling for a different, a different system, we need to be able to have discussions about what that might look like. And so I don't really want us to go back to 4-4-2 with... Uh, gelatinous gloop big man up front knocking the ball down for it'll be Obafemi let's face it um, mm -hmm. with yeah. Callum Robinson as sub to come on to, to change things up for the last 15 minutes with McLean on the left and I don't know I don't know who on the right and two central midfielders like do we have two I mean can Jason Knight play in a two in the middle I don't know Hendrick can't anymore is it Cullen plus plus Knight is that or is it Malumbi plus night in a four four two? And then yeah, like yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you bring Darrow Shea in there as a, as an almost a holding player with night as well? Like I don't. You almost need to to have to just swarm that midfield because that's where we seem to get get driven out of games. I I, I do think that um, uh, three at the back with if you have Collins, Darrow Shea, and Omamdeli as those three, like that would be interesting into the future where you've got three ball players who can all step forward and can all bring the ball forward it does remove the Duffy set piece which yeah. you know our biggest threat but sometimes sometimes maybe you've just got to take a risk well, just, you know? okay we're in a results based business as Shane was saying so you get rid of our biggest threat our centre half you know, Shane Duffy and is... then then we're building for the future but was that the whole point of Stephen Kenny at the end of the Martin O'Neill era was oh, can we just go back to big can we start again this whole project and at least try to play a bit of fo football like but now we're getting to a stage where the football's not being played and the results aren't either was there an acceptance that the results weren't coming at the start but at least we're trying to play a bit of football I thought, was the, I thought that was the whole point with Kenny like I, 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 yeah it's true Colin but also like the, where, the concern with me now is like we have this game against Scotland on, on Saturday and look we have live commentary of that as well and off the ball on Saturday and I'm worried about it um, like Oh yeah. At what point? <laughs> oh yeah. All the, all, the, all the positivity. Where does it go after Saturday if we lose at home to Scotland? I mean, it's going to be bad. Like, you would hope though that there's enough rivalry there to inspire the team and the crowd to get into that in a way that, I, like, somebody made the point, very hard for the crowd to be particularly raucous last night. Going, oh screw you. We really hope that you lose yeah. this game. It's like actually, we're yeah. really sorry for the the shit that's going on in your lives, and this is not really that important tonight. Yeah. So, no, it's not quite the. It wasn't the bear pit of Eva. No, I yeah. noticed that actually, yeah. It was quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. There wasn't many tackles flying in, yeah. I noticed that big time. I wonder, is he gone this time next week if there's two more defeats to follow? I think that would be ridiculous. I think that would be absolutely ridiculous. think it would be ridiculous? ridiculous? I do, I do. Do you think it would be ridiculous, Shane? The, like, his, his contract is through to the end of the Euros qualifying campaign. This is the Nations League. 2024, yeah. Like, our record in the Nations League has been abysmal under all the managers. Yeah. And no one ever really got fired because of the Nations League results. Okay, so are we overreacting? 
No, well, I, I think I think Jerry, you're right. Like, I don't think he will be. I don't think he will be sacked. We can still talk about the fact that some people are going to suggest he should be if they if they lose to Scotland. Like, the target was to win this Nations League group. That's what Stephen Kenny said himself. So if they if they manage to lose their opening three games, clearly they're behind where he thought they were. They were like the Armenia game was was a was. Say say you put the Armenia game down to a freak, and it wasn't. It was just a terrible performance on the night, but. Then to lose to Ukraine and Scotland would be, it wouldn't be a nail in the coffin for Stephen Kenny. He's not going to lose his job. They're going to give him this campaign. But the reality is, this is a third campaign for Stephen Kenny and this management team. So, like, you you always give managers excuses in their first campaign. Of course, they need time. Second campaign, you start to say, okay, we want to start seeing some progress here. But in the third campaign, that's when results need to start happening. And and look, if they lose to Scotland on Saturday. And and I I would be concerned for this Irish team on Saturday. I'd like to think the same as yourself, Joe, that they could maybe up it given the the little Celtic rivalry there. And, and but the that's based on hope. Better. You know that 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 is literally based on hope, not evidence. There's there hasn't been a, enough evidence of progression in this. Like we all said, let's judge them now, and the judgment has to start now. And the judgment after these two games is going to be pretty harsh, and deservedly so. It's this is international football. This is this is big boy pants. And yeah. you know what um, doesn't help either for people who aren't for Kenny's we don't get hammered so at the end of O'Neill it was obvious the change had to come remember the Denmark obliteration afterwards and Martin O'Neill's trying to stoke they say afterwards we were well beaten yeah but we're, these games are kind of close on paper if you didn't watch one Stephen Kenny game and you're a football fan you were like seeing how Ireland got on it was like oh yeah they're kind of there and thereabouts all the time like, you know that's the thing with it well, I, think it's, I think it's more nuanced than the, other thing is the that actual narrative is in the country where there's a massive massive split I don't think there's a massive split I think a lot of people a huge split <clears throat> I think a lot of people and certainly the match going fans have been on Kenny's side the whole way through and they're desperate for him to succeed and there's a, a wellspring of hope that we can play more progressive football and that we can get this group of uh, of journeymen to perform better than the sum of their parts which is which is what the alchemy of international management is supposed to be. So you look around the world and you see mediocre teams getting out of their groups at major tournaments because they have a great togetherness, they have a clear identity, and they're doing something that they all believe in. Like, uh, having said that, most of the teams around us who are similar sized all have one world-class player or two world-class players. Scotland have Andy Robertson, uh, which ultimately wasn't good enough to get them to the uh, World Cup. Wales have Gareth Bale, which was good enough and Ukraine had Zinchenko and that wasn't quite good enough but they're like clearly a better team than us so we don't have those players at the moment we nearly did but we don't and as a result we have not very much to hang our hats on So are these match going fans hugely supportive of Kenny so where are they at the moment all I'm reading here all I see but there are, everybody but how, they want them out so well, where? how is there that much of a split because the people who want him out are the ones who are going to text in this morning the people who are going to defend him are like this what? is the time to defend him well what's then your argument come back in. what's your argument though well what, what we've been what, talking about for like 20, 23 minutes it's, of, it's difficult it's, it's actually I think it's way more and how do you have conviction nuanced. around that argument when we got beaten by Armenia and we just got beaten okay. at home by Ukraine so it's, where do it's we, hard where would, where would we go now so you, you sack Stephen Kenny hypothetically in the next week because there's two more negative results to follow in the next seven days. Okay, so what would the plan be then? And I, people will say, it doesn't matter what the plan is, you just have to get rid of this. Is it really that disastrous at the moment? No, it's not. And it's not down to one man that it's a disaster. No, it's, it's, it really isn't. And we can, talk about, uh, we can talk about the fact that the domestic league has been uh, considered the problem child by the parent organisation and that it doesn't get investment from the national broadcaster at a level that we, we spend more money in the Champions League than we do as taxpayers to watch it the, than we do on the, the League of Ireland. All of that feeds into the fact that the national team isn't where it should be, right? But specifically his job is to get us out of this group <clears throat> or uh, you know to qualify for the next tournament and there's an opportunity which is now over from the Nations League it's more likely that we're going to be relegated than we're going to win this group now you would have to say um, you know for the next manager coming in being in the third tier and qualifying from that would actually be more likely but I mean would you back us against North Macedonia at the moment probably not or Georgia <laughs> Like lads, I think that's the I think that's the the point at which like you, it's it's all well and good saying you know some people call in for Stephen Kenny's head if they lose to Scotland. I, I think if they're relegated from this League of Nations group, given the the fact that the ambition was to get promoted to start getting regular home games against the top tier teams, which of course is going to bring in a lot of money. If then you're you're talking about playing teams below this current level that we're at, 
that's that's when it's a disaster. Like I, w- I was in um, I was in Slattery's pub near near the Aviva last night after the match, chatting to a couple of random Irish fans, uh, and and a couple of them were Kenny in still to this point. But yeah. as you said, they're they're finding it very difficult to come up with with an argument at which to keep him because if you lose to the likes of Luxembourg and Armenia, it's tough to concoct an argument. You can say keep patient, you can say give the manager time, but the reality the reality is it is a results based business. Stephen knows that himself. As I said, it's a third campaign. To to hear Stephen even after the match talking about the the, you, the are you, uh, Ukrainian are you goal the game. Slovenia game as a, uh, I don't I, I mean it's not really a third campaign. It's a first full campaign properly. Yeah, yeah. To, to be fair to Stephen, look, but at the same time he's what had what twenty twenty five or six. No, he's, he's, not, he's not inexperienced anymore. He really is. It, there's no the, all of the all of the bits we did say judge him on this, and the evidence is not good. That's the problem. Like this was supposed to be an opportunity for us to spend time together, catapult the team forward, be brave, look good, and we don't look good, and we, we're not being brave. It's it's the opposite of, of what we wanted to happen is happening, and you can't dress that up. So, but sacking him as opposed to trying to get through this and giving him the opportunity to solve the problem that he has, that's nonsensical. That would be nonsensical to sack the manager now, for an organisation that, let's face it, at the moment is still not a shining beacon of how to run a sports organisation. Where's the sponsor for the men's senior international team? Like, what, what's going on with that? The director of football, apparently the appointment is ready to be announced and a, a deal has been done, but we're just, still, for whatever reason, it hasn't happened. Yeah. You know, there's a, like, there's, the FAI have enough on their plate at the moment. They've somehow managed to screw up what's going on at Daily Mount. We still don't know what, what's going to happen with that. Like, what? So... Is football in Ireland... Well, they're not too busy to get rid of him is, if they well, wanted to get rid of him. Is it ready for a distraction of, like, we need a new manager at the international, senior international team? I'm well, not sure. Look, this lack of sponsor, like, that's more pressure on Kenny again. So you're hardly going to attract uh, an on-defence sponsor from last night's showing. I mean, I, I, it's not his job to get the sponsorship. That's the chief executive and the commercial director and that, that crowd. That the commercial director the will, be, will go, ah, but look at, look at the team on the pitch. So well, who's gonna, what brand is we going to get well, behind that? I mean, you know, it's still, a, it's still a really interesting collection of young Irish men who are out there representing us. And it's like, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, right. Il Postino 88, terrible indictment of Irish football is that we simply cannot do anything positive with the ball when we have it. Two main questions, is there any real progression? And two, what's the point in continuing with these tactics if there's no results? Do you think it's still, you know, too too soon to announce everything is a failure? Like, it's just, sport is tricky. Yeah. We're in the middle of a really bad run at the moment and uh, maybe it starts to turn around, but we need to start turning around pretty quickly. We need to see something. The first 10 minutes... Right, first ten minutes, you're like, oh, we're doing <laughs> something positive. here. We're doing something. Look, night looks great. Yeah. Sign him up, fella. Yeah, look, if you watched the first ten minutes last night and then just looked at the results of Kenny's time, you'd be like, yeah, they're not bad. They're in a decent shape. Uh, can I ask, at what stage do we have to start looking at Kenny? Asks Paddy Vaughan. Had a free pass. I haven't seen a progress in style. If any previous managers had his current record, they will be slaughtered. Well, he has been slaughtered. There's been a campaign against him from about five matches in to get rid of him from a bunch of hacks like there just has been and there's been constant people from the very second he got the job saying he wasn't good enough so you're not paying attention if you're saying he hasn't been slaughtered he has been slaughtered by loads of people but he also managed to rally people behind him because there was an uptick and there was hope and there was promise but those players are not delivering at the moment on the promise uh, right I'm going to play some um, Jason Knight here he was uh, this is they need to change it to make it the Ireland player of the match when they're announcing it. Ireland's player of the match is, as opposed to the player of the match is, because we all know that that's not the case. Now, it used to be, the excuse used to be the sponsors only wanted to um, have an Irish player, but the sponsor isn't there at the moment. So, no, don't know what the crack is. So let's listen to Jason Knight in conversation. Jason, how frustrating a night was that? Yeah, frustrating, disappointing to for the result um, I think there were some positives in the game but first and foremost the result is what we wanted and, and we didn't get it tonight The first 50 minutes you really led the charge and Ireland flew out of the blocks and it felt as though a goal was inevitable and it just sort of fall away very quickly can you, can you put your finger on what changed from how Ireland were playing after 15 minutes to how they were playing after half an hour? Um, no, not really look, you have your good moments in, in games and your, and your bad moments look, Ukraine are a good team as well so they're going to have their moments but um, I think, like I said, we need to, when we're on top, we need to sort of get that first goal. 
and um, that first goal was vital, especially in international football. That, that first goal was vital, and we've been on the the receiving end of that the last couple of games as well. So it's it's not it's not nice. They made a lot of changes, but they still had a lot of experience, particularly in the middle of midfield. How, how did you find it in terms of trying to get on the ball and trying to really influence the game? I think um, I had I had a good amount of ball, and I think I can demand more from myself going forward. Still, I need to get more goals and assists. I had a couple of chances that I should have took, but. Look, that's football, and I'll try and I'll try and do better. It's a, a an unfortunate record that Ireland have in the Nations League in terms of still waiting for a first win, but also just two goals. And it felt as though goals were starting to come easier at the over the last year. What's gone on over the last couple of games that not a huge amount of chances have been created, with the exception of maybe the last sort of 10, 12 minutes of matches? Oh, I don't know. Look, we've had a good 12 months or 18 months, and and this this couple of games shouldn't define us, but. We need to go and, and react on Saturday and uh, get a good result and get a good performance with that as well. Stephen had stated that the aim was to win the Nations League group to get promotion and all the benefits to go with that. It's a very different scenario that's in play now. You're probably looking at avoiding relegation and looking at it in a different way. Have you spoken about that and what you want to get from the next two games? No, we haven't We haven't spoken about it. Look, we're, we're just looking forward now. We need to go into Saturday with full confidence and full of energy and, and try and get a, a really good result, especially at home. What about confidence when you think back to coming into the squad last week, where it was with those positive results to, to where it was and we just left the dressing room there? Has it, has it been affected? No, look, I think there's still confidence in the group. We've had, we've had a couple of knockbacks in the last, the last week or so, but we're still a confident group. We've still got some very, very good players and then we're going to go into Saturday raring to go and, and try and get a good reaction. You know, when defeats come, there'll be questions about every part of the setup. In terms of the players' belief in what Stephen is trying to do, what would you say about that? No, it's it's still fully behind the manager. I don't think that can be questioned. The, the gaffer and the staff have been great with us, especially us young lads coming through. They've given us a chance, and, and I don't think that being, can be questioned. Um, look, we're we're just looking forward to Saturday and, and trying to put it right. Yeah, Jason Knight's going to be in the Ireland team. I'd say forever yeah. from now on. Like if he's fit. Forever. I mean, we'd say that about Callum Robinson a couple of months ago. Well, say that about mm. Ogbeni's goal scoring form that we finally had a goal scoring striker. Well, it changes, I mean, you know. I don't know. I think that like he, he played very well though. He's a cut above. He is a cut above, and um, certainly he'd be in the team. Uh, OTBAM brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. Willa Callum, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I suppose this was the worry when the Kenny referendum was happening, lads, at the tail end of 2020 and into 2021, where there were some people who felt that, you know, no matter what happened results-wise, this was about a longer-term project and therefore Stephen Kenny had to be around for the European qualifiers to try and get into the tournament in 2024. And there was almost a feeling among some people that a blank check was required and uh, that we almost had to put the short term of results to one side. And now we've seen two games back-to-back -back where we've gone backwards at a rate of knots by comparison to the way that the Republic of Ireland were playing, uh, particularly at the tail end of the qualifying campaign, the performance at home against Portugal, even the friendly against Belgium, where there was plenty of hope. And uh, the way that the attack seemed to be coming together with Ogbeni and Robinson um, back for the games against Azerbaijan and against Qatar, there were plenty of reasons to be optimistic. But now... Unfortunately, the Republic of Ireland have gone back to the type of form that we saw in the kind of opening dozen games of Stephen Kenny's tenure. And the results, like when you put it down, as simple as it is, six defeats and six draws in Nations League games and just the two goals scored uh, probably tells its own story. And the most frustrating thing I think about this window was the fact that everything aligned quite nicely with Ukraine and Scotland's qualifying fixtures for the World Cup uh, being pushed back. It meant that both teams were going to be in a position where they had hugely emotionally and physically demanding games around the Republic of Ireland fixtures. And we saw effectively Ukraine's B team last night, a series of you know, under-21 players who only had a handful of caps playing at the Aviva Stadium, 10 changes from their defeat against Wales last weekend. You know, Scotland are probably going to make changes as well. I don't know whether it's going to be a bit of a mix and match maybe uh, from them for this Saturday at the Aviva Stadium. And then you mix in the Armenia game where... Whatever about maybe winning the game, we would have been expected not to lose away from home against Armenia. The feeling was that this was set up to try and get the Nations League campaign underway with at least, I would think, two wins out of the three fixtures. That has not happened, and that heaps the pressure on. As you guys have said, really it's now about looking over the shoulder about relegation from the Nations League, as opposed to at the outset where Stephen Kenny was talking about being competitive and potentially even getting promoted to League A. I think that was always a little bit too optimistic, and obviously a manager is going to come out and say that at the outset. Is he, though? But 
Izzy, I actually think you, the, that, that was a misstep. That was a big misstep. It was like, oh, we can win that group. It's like, just just talk about we're going to... Everything is building towards the Euros campaign. That's what the plan is, as opposed to trying to win this group because we haven't won a game in this division. We didn't get relegated on technicality from this division. Mm-hmm. Ideally, we'd be in one division lower than this and playing against a, a standard that is closer to our standard at the moment. And I, I think that was a mistake, to be honest. And um, they might have... Uh, might have retracted I, I, that. I think even League C will be difficult right now, though. Jared I agree. Based on the I agree. In the first two games, you I know, agree. Like, you know, we struggled against both Bulgaria and Finland last time round too. Um, to play against teams around about that level was looking even at just the fixtures from during the week. And I was thinking the Republic of Ireland will probably struggle to win games in this group currently. And there is that feeling that this could be a real damn squib if there's a poor result against Scotland on Saturday. It'll really then be a case of trying to dig in later this year to make sure that they stay in Group B. And look, there was the very juicy thing at the end of uh, Group B. If potentially the Republic of Ireland had done well, um, it could have led to a potential playoff for the European Champions in 2024 More than it would have been a very yeah. yeah it would have been a very nice safety net based on the fact that a lot of teams in this group are probably going to qualify through the traditional route so um, lads, that seems lads. to be up in smoke after two games like I, I actually disagree with, with, with that what you said there Jared like why, why why wouldn't he speak of ambitions to win? Like he's he's almost saying because it makes rot for your back and it means that everybody in the comments is like, oh, you told us we were going to win this and now know, you haven't won it. Who are you? Uh, Who are you not, anyway? He, he, That's what he's happened. not saying it for the benefit of the fans. He, I feel like he, Stephen Kenny was saying that for the benefit of the players, making them believe. You know, he, the players aren't stupid. They're reading his comments in the papers or whatever in the media. If they see their manager saying, yeah, of course we can go on and win this 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 league, this UEFA Nations League group the players might start to believe it. He probably he might not have thought when he was saying it that they actually would go on to win the group, but it might just instill a little bit of confidence and faith. And okay, but it's a high wire team. act. It's a high wire act. And surely that comes from the work that's done on the training ground and that comes from the, the man management skills that we hear are so good. You know, and that comes from their internal motivation. That comes from Seamus Coleman and that comes from the kids infusing the team with confidence and energy. Like, I, I get the point you're making. I just think it's far less relevant uh, in international football than it is now uh, having said that when Trapattoni was telling everybody these players really you know yeah. I'm, I'm cutting my cloth that that I, that must have had a I don't know if that had a negative impact or not because that was like he was talking to Robbie Keane and Damien Duff you know and uh, and Shea Given and like Champions League players who were being told they weren't good enough maybe they responded to that with a screw you we're going to show you yeah. this, these, the, I, this this has turned out I think to be it, it, and the reason I'm talking about it, Shane, is because it's a, a common theme coming through in the comments. Very quickly, some comments, because seven minutes past eight. Il Pacino 88 says, if you want Kenny out, then name a replacement. Uh, Paul Mallon says, I think they should have gone for Chris Coleman when they could have. It's not the Chris that usually comes up, Jared. It's usually Chris Hewton uh, that people yeah. talk about. He had his uh, advisor role with Ghana uh, through the recent um, African Cup of Nations. But yeah, I saw I saw Chris Chris Hewton tweets again at the weekend. Yeah. Uh, despite the fact that you know Nottingham Forest had an incredible change in fortunes after Hewton left the club last year. Yeah, but he seems to be the name that comes up every time. Uh, it was Mick McCarthy before that, obviously. Genuinely, what's the plan? Like a three-four-three with two attacking centre midfielders, a false nine that doesn't drop back, wingers bombing it into the box with no target. Uh, James McCullough asks is Kenny failing, falling into the same trap as McCarthy and previous Ireland managers by staying loyal to out of form players he's definitely staying loyal to players who aren't playing international football and that's a very good point by the way on both that I think on the system too which is that the idea of going to three at the back and deploying the two wing backs was almost primarily to try and get the best out of Enda Stevens and Matt Doherty Enda Stevens has obviously had a very difficult campaign because of the injuries that he had at Sheffield United he's out of form currently I don't think he played particularly well over the last two games. I'd expect James McLean to probably start against Scotland at the weekend. And at right wing back, the Republic of Ireland have really missed Matt Doherty for these last few fixtures. And again, Matt Doherty appeared to be coming into form before he got his injury for Tottenham. I don't know if Seamus Coleman is the right player to play right wing back. And even last night, his leadership seemed to be missed on the pitch, just even uh, trying to drive the team forward when the game got a bit static. But the idea was to try and get Coleman in at right centre-back. Now it would appear that Nathan Collins fits very well into that position, but the Republic of Ireland don't really have great options at right wing-back because well, it's very early for Festy. I thought Cyrus Christie was very conservative with his use of the ball last night. And as a result, we're not getting the most out of the wing-backs, which was the whole idea of going three at the back in the first place. Yeah, I definitely would have, wouldn't have minded seeing uh, Chidozik Benny playing there last night just to see what happens when he plays there at international level. Perhaps that's his best position, we don't know. Uh, but, Ger, we are no good, says Powell74. I mean, there's certainly a view out there. That's, yeah. that's the people are kind of saying that, uh, you know, and like, how, how how do we get good? Just be good. 
Just yeah, tell, tell that's the, the problem. Hey, you, 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 and you. You be good, okay? You do whatever uh, uh, it is you need to do to be good, simple. and we'll be grand. And it lots of a load of that is out of Stephen Kenny's control too. Like, remember how well Jamie McGrath had been playing? And like we all spoke about how excellent he was, particularly away from home against Portugal. Then he gets a move where he had been going well in Scotland, goes to Wigan, can't get a game, and then really you can't include McGrath in the squad because he's getting no first team football. Well, he can't control the likes of Hendrick, injuries and Callum Robinson got out of form. He, he picks Hendrick when he's not playing football, do you know, and he picks Duffy when he's not mm. playing football. So why is it a different standard for Jamie McGrath? I, I understand that they have a, a, you know, fifty whatever number of caps, and so. I do get it. It's just that it's sometimes it seems like it's different rules for different players. And well, we know why he picks Duffy. The Duffy's the biggest threat. Well, but isn't it just as well that um, Doherty and Coleman didn't play last night? If that result was still to happen, because then we'd have nothing to hang our hats on. Well, isn't it just, so at least we have that. If you, Myler was really interesting right. yesterday when he said like I would do whatever it was. The be all and end all for me was playing for Ireland. If he dropped Duffy, would Duffy force a move? If he dropped Hendrick. Would Hendrick force another move to a club where he's going to play football week in, week out? I don't know. Do you know? Hank wants to get in on that too. Yeah, what do you think, Hank? Nice. Uh, he's, he's having a good check. I don't think Ricky likes the idea of Shane Duffy having to force a move. What can he not Look, at to... different stages of the season. Like, Callum Robinson was in good form uh, for West Brom at different stages of the season, then didn't finish the season particularly well. And when Callum Robinson was playing well for his club, he was playing really well for the Republic of Ireland. Like, we remember how well he played, uh, particularly in those fixtures against Qatar and Azerbaijan, where Ireland actually took the ball in the front foot. The problem is, I think for the last two games, uh, the Republic of Ireland carried very little threat. I mean, realistically, outside of Robinson hitting the ball into the side netting in Yerevan, and the Shane Duffy chances, say, you know, when the ball was crossed in, he went for the most audacious of efforts over his head. The Republic of Ireland created very little outside of set pieces and crosses outside of that. In, in general play, the Republic of Ireland created nothing in Look, it's over true. two hours of football. It's true. I mean, that is the history of us watching football. You know, with the exception of the Roy Keane era, in particular that qualifying campaign, when we, I'd say we scored almost every chance we created. So we weren't creating a million chances. And we did have Robbie Keane and Damien Duff in the side uh, in their pomp. So look, we, I mean, it's not uh, it's it's our curse to watch football where there are no chances <laughs> created for us, and uh, we're we're living a constant Groundhog Day at the moment. Um, uh, like, what happens if the penalty gets given? Is everything completely different? The team well, I was saying with, yeah, infused yeah, with confidence. Yeah, and Duffy scores the winner with the header. Are we still saying, well, well, we're not playing well? The football's terrible. The system's no good. Knocking the best of our players, and the results are actually masking. No, what's I'd, happening I'd, but then at the same time people say it's a results business yeah, I think it's very hard to please everybody here like the, yeah, the problem is that we're doing the problem <laughs> is we're doing uh, seemingly neither at you the match, moment you match going fan the, that, your expectations by the way Kenny's the saying Kenny's saying he wanted him in the group it's no bad thing He's trying to rebalance the post-traumatic stress of the Trapattoni era. Know, where there's they a way to do it without making it off your back. So that the uh, people it, that's in the comments, hindsight. That's your hindsight not, talking. We said it at the time. We said it at the time. One hundred percent. Did you go back and watch? If we tips, went back though, and you, you would say, I, "I'm not sure about this. That's making it off your back because everybody's going to come oh. for you." And lo and behold, as night follows day, so that's not what they're coming. The keyboard for. warriors are coming. Oh, he said we're going to win the group, and then yeah. we're going to get relegated. What's going on? I'm telling you. Uh, no, no. Cal says Nations League are basically friendlies anyway. Yeah, that's the spirit. Uh, Kenny's trying to bring a bunch of green kids through to international football, says Fergus Keogh. Let him at it, because Big Sam will just pick 11, 28-year-old English rejects and play six to back to grind out one nils. Do you know what? Yeah, maybe, and will we be happy then? Maybe, I just, I was because about, then we're gone to the major tournaments. I was just about to ask. Reeling in the ears. Is, is, that, is, is that who we are? Uh, English cast-off rejects grinding out one nils. Is that actually... What you want to be. Is that when you were a kid in the back garden, you were dreaming of being, you know, like Kevin Davis-esque? <laughs> is that what you wanted? Maybe it is. Right. Well, we didn't even get to talk about the hurling pot. I presume it was good this week. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty saucy uh, based on the weekend uh, just gone by because we had a monster hurling final for the ages, probably the best one in uh, modern memory, at least, between Clare and Limerick, which has really kind of whet the appetite for the idea of a potential trilogy if this was to be an All-Ireland final between Clare and Limerick. And I think, you know, based on the evidence of the two provincial finals from last weekend, there's a very good chance that they'll meet again. You know, Clare have not been beaten in 70 minutes in the three meetings so far this year with Limerick, which has to give them an awful lot of hope. And on the flip side, Limerick have just become their first team since the 
1930s to go four in a row. And they've achieved it without Keane Lynch being available since a few minutes into the second game of the round robin. So Limerick maybe even have more improvement. Uh, Seamus Flanagan is bad, back in 100% fit and absolutely firing last weekend. We had a kind of a superstar performance uh, from Tony Kelly for Clare, uh, which you know bodes well, I think, for both teams. Uh, Clare run aside the draw, which I think they'll feel they can qualify from an All-Ireland final from. Uh, they've got effectively what we would call the uh, Leinster side of the draw. They'll most likely play Wexford if Wexford overcome uh, the Joe McDonough beaten finalist Kerry away from home this weekend. Yeah. In the quarter final next week, and then it will be Kilkenny in the semi final, which is a good route for Clare. Okay, we know all that. What I, what I haven't heard is the, the spice between the two lads because uh, basically the instruction from Scahill last week was go easy on me, go easy on me, horse. <laughs> did, he, did, did, did he go easy on him or did he, <sighs> did he batter him? Uh, no, I, I, I think Paul Paul was a nice man. He's a, he's a nice man, he's a good man. Sometimes maybe, he, maybe, maybe a bit too nice this time. Well, I mean, he left all, we were really all the dark arts were on the field, it turns out. Yeah, exactly. No, I think the fact that Galway were so poor in the game itself meant oh, that... Oh, he patronised you know, him. Is that, is that? It's like, um, I, don't, I, I don't respect you enough to, to go at you now. I, I'm, I'm going to be nice to you. Was it that? I think there was a certain amount of Kilkenny cute tourism oh. as well, where Paul was incredibly uh, quietly confident last week about Kilkenny. So we were talking about how well Galway had done, Galway had done nothing wrong. Kilkenny were so poor against Wexford. The use of the ball was poor. They were reverting back to type and it was long ball and it wasn't working out. And all the matchups seemed to be set up in a way that Galway were going to win. Yeah. And Paul just had that feeling. It's like Kilkenny will adapt. Brian will find a way. And there you are, 22 Leinster titles now for Brian Cody as player and coach, 74 for Kilkenny. It's unmatched dominance in any province for a single championship. And Kilkenny have done three in a row. Quietly, they may have done it, but uh, they were very, very impressive at the weekend. So as a result, uh, Paul Murphy was just kind of smug as a Cheshire cat. The cat that uh, not the necess- Can someone not tell necess- me what was said in the handshake? Does anybody know? I don't think it was the handshake column. I, I don't think the issue was the handshake. I think the issue was that Henry Shefflin had to do all of he the had effort to, go to get over, across yeah. the front court. Ah, so well, get That's over yourself a bit too. Like, there's a bit of get over oh. yourself for that, you know? What I ah, saw, precious, what, come on, no, come on. I saw was Shefflin go over and say, oh, well done, better team won. And he expected something similar in retort, which, and then I think Cody was like, thanks. Yeah, and smiled well, at him that's it. and White Sheffield made such a huge to deal of shaking his head spoils. and walking away because he knew the camera was going to go to him yeah. uh, I want sure, to know what was said sure, there's, there's a way of doing things lads and it's the winning manager goes over and seeks the ah, they, they, they meet turn. in the middle I they agree. meet in the middle well, you see, they didn't meet. They didn't meet in the middle either because Henry Shefflin went around, shook hands. With no, the no, 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 no. Shefflin stood there. Shefflin stood there with his coach. Stood, stood, there, stood he, there for ages, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So there's a pair of them in at will, and it's it's been very one sided. I think poor Cody, for the for the first time in my life, I feel a little bit of sympathy for the most successful man that there's ever been in the game. Cody of was <laughs> looking for anyone to shake their hands. He was, anyone? He was, he was like he was like thing. Hank, like he was going around in circles at one point just to avoid Shefflin. <laughs> In any way, oh, it is box classic. office stuff. It is, it is absolutely box Brian office Cody, stuff. Brian Cody did the alpha thing as well, lads. He left his feet effectively planted when Henry Shefflin was going over to him, and that's the reason I think that Henry yeah. Shefflin was shaking his head. Well, he, there, wasn't there wasn't even a ninety ten. There wasn't even a ninety ten. There wasn't even a ninety ten. Come on, win the game. Hundred. Your job is to win the game. You can't be giving out about the handshake so afterwards. The things that was what was said. It was the fact that there was no actions taken by Cody. It was the nothingness of it all. But I have never seen such a deliberate shake of a head. Oh, when totally. he walked, and he knew totally, he totally. knew the camera was going to be hope, on him. I hope they nurse this grievance a lot over the winter, and next year we get it, and it's even better. Please let everybody stay in in situ. Please, whatever happens, let Cody be there next year, let Sheffield be there next year, and it's going to be the greatest thing that we've ever seen. The camera operators know, knew what was said. Well, uh, I, I haven't heard what was said. And maybe Will is right. I, I just want to know they, what was they said. Kind of, I, I saw somebody giving out. Was it Hector was giving out about, oh, let's see the scenes of the celebrating players? No, we've seen them all no, celebrating no, no, a gazillion no, 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 times. No, that's it's frustrating. Still uh, don't yeah. cut away from it. Whatever you do, don't cut away from it.